this is a climate justice community. We're very vulnerable in many ways. There's a lot of coastal flooding we've witnessed. In 2018, I stepped out of the house to be in like knee deep water. This has happened a few times now. Our sewer system could actually handle the flood from one tide. If the second tide brings in more water, then the sewer system is now overwhelmed. My house personally, anytime we get more than an inch of rain, the basement floods. It has been increasing noticeably as time has gone on. Maybe my greatest impact is mold. It's had a really noticeable impact on my health. What we've been told by contractors is that there's no point in fixing it because it will just happen again. That's flooding specifically caused by rainfall. Do you get any impact when you get the high tides? I do not personally, but two, three streets over from me and also this area we're in right now, um, they will sometimes be under a foot of water. We know that our coastlines are going to be redefined by water. Eventually, we'll have to move. I do think we have a really strong community here, and so I'm hopeful that if and when the time comes to relocate, it will be a painful process regardless, but it will be as painless as is possible. In the meantime, researchers are partnering with the city's authorities to develop a network of sensors that can warn citizens about flooding. There's a couple of different types of overland flood sensors that we've been um, using that are provided by a company called Hohonu, based out of Hawaii. It's fitting that this technology has come out of an island state on the front line of some of the worst impacts of sea level rise. Hohonu has developed two different types of sensors that use ultrasound and radar, respectively, to measure water depth. And the way they do it is by sending out signals that measure both the height of the water and that distance to land and give us an overall depth of the water on the land. What is it that makes these sensors particularly innovative? They can help us understand if wind is pushing more water onto the land. A tide gauge won't tell us that, but these will pick that up by directly measuring the depth of water that's occurring in that particular area. So that site-specific information is really helpful for local communities to understand the risk to them of overland flooding. We have five major sensor points in Boston Harbor, um, one quite near to where we're sitting right now. The majority of the year they measure nothing. We get flat lines on our graphs, which sometimes for scientists might not seem that exciting, but when there is a major flooding event, then we can dip into the data and see that peak. How is that data useful to the average person who might be affected by flooding here in Boston? The average person, I think, can dip in on a day when they've seen a lot of rainfall occur or where they know there might be a high tide occurring in their area and see what it means for their commute, whether they should work from home today or whether they should go into the office. This dashboard displays all the data collected by the sensors. Here it gives you the site-specific information about where the flooding is occurring, where we're standing. And right now it's reading zero, thankfully. It's very site-specific, so it's literally the water depth where that sensor is located. But if the water depth there is showing three feet, then if you're living in the local area, it's pretty likely that floodwaters are getting to you. 